Guten Tag, ladies and gentlemen. We got another lecture on the heart to do here. Another heart lecture. That's our plan for right now. So, here's the thing. Today we're going to be talking about the cardiac cycle, which is a set of events associated with a single heartbeat. So it's pretty much everything that happens inside the heart every beat. Obviously, it's a cycle because it repeats itself over and over and over again. A couple new terms here we got to be aware of. Systole is another word for contraction. Diastole, another word for relaxation. And during every cardiac cycle, all four chambers are going to experience a period of systole and a period of diastole. And as they do this, the pressures and volumes in those four chambers are going to change in a predictable fashion. And that's what we are going to go through. So, what do we got? Four phases to the cardiac cycle. Since it is a cycle, we could you know, start arbitrarily anywhere. doesn't matter. But by convention, we start with ventricular filling. During which the ventricle is, you guessed it, filling. Filling with blood. Then we move on to isovolumetric contraction. The ventricle is contracting, but its volume is not changing. Then ventricular ejection, where blood is leaving the ventricle. Then isovolumetric relaxation, where the ventricle is relaxing and its volume is not changing. And then back to ventricular filling. Notice how all these names are based on what the ventricles are doing. All right. Now, of course, the atria will be doing things too, but the names are based on what's going on in the ventricles. One other quick thing, as I discuss these four phases, bear in mind I'm going to be talking solely about the left side of the heart. We can do this because if we know the left side, we automatically know the right side. Whatever's going on on the left, same thing is going on on the right. The only difference is the left side will generate a greater amount of pressure. All right, so during ventricular filling, the volume of the left ventricle is increasing. It is increasing because the mitral valve is open. I don't know why it says closed right there. I don't know who put that there. It should read open. So the mitral valve is open. The mitral valve is open because blood is entering the ventricle. Blood is entering the ventricle because the ventricle pressure is lower than the atrial pressure. Now, why is the left ventricle pressure low? Well, the left ventricle pressure is low because the left ventricle is in diastole. It is relaxing. All right, now, meanwhile, the aortic valve is closed, okay? All right, there can only be one valve open, either entrance or exit at one time. You can't have both open. Okay, since the mitral is open, the aortic has got to be closed. And pressure-wise, the aortic is closed because of the low ventricular pressure. It is lower than aortic pressure. Pressure up in the aorta up here is higher than down in the ventricle. So blood is going to try and go back. Can't do it, though, because that valve gets shut. All right. couple more things. The first four-fifths or so of ventricular filling is totally passive. The atria are in diastole, too. All right? The last 20%, though, the atria are squeezing, and that forces that last little bit of blood down into the ventricle. And once ventricular filling is done, the volume in the ventricle is known as the end diastolic volume. All right. There's some graphs here. Check out this ventricular volume graph during time versus time here. So volume is going up, 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 up. All right, getting up to its peak value, which in this case is 130, and that would be the end diastolic volume. Now, notice as the volume is rising, boom, right here, boom, right there. It takes a little jump. See that little jump? That little jump is because of the atrial systole. All right, pressure graph over here on the right. Notice that left atrial pressure exceeds left ventricle. Okay, this means that blood will be moving from the atrium into the ventricle, and thus this is why the mitral valve is open. 
Notice also that there's a little jump right here. That little jump is due to atrial systole. So that jump right there for the pressure graph, this jump right here for the volume graph, both due to atrial systole. Also, look how high up aortic pressure is up here. Really high, much greater than the ventricular pressure, which is why the aortic semilunar valve is closed. Okay, next phase, isovolumetric contraction. The left ventricle contracts. Okay, as it squeezes, the pressure inside it starts to go up really, really quickly. The left ventricle's pressure exceeds left atrial pressure. All right, if I go back for a second, I mean, look how close they were here. Not going to take much to beat that. But look how much farther away that guy is. All right. So really quickly, left ventricle pressure exceeds left atrial pressure. Blood tries to go back up. But boom, slam, the AV valve shut. And this creates the love sound, the first heart sound. You know how when you listen to a heartbeat, it's like, lub -dub, lub -dub. that first heart sound, the lub, is caused by these AV valves shutting. But meanwhile, as we just noticed a moment ago, the aortic pressure is really, really high. And because the aortic pressure is really, really high, the aortic semilunar valve stays shut. All right, so mitral valve closed, aortic valve closed. Entrance, exit, shut. Nothing going in, nothing going out. Volume ain't changing. Because volume ain't changing, we are isovolumetric. Notice the ventricle pressure is greater than aortic, but less than, sorry, greater than atrial, but less than aortic. And during that period of time, both valves are closed. Graph. Look at that straight line right there. Straight line right there for isovolumetric contraction. Because the volume, not changing. Iso, all right? And that volume, of course, is the EDV, the end diastolic volume. Notice that the pressure here, basically between atrial and aortic, greater than atrial, which was enough to shut the mitral valve, but not enough to overcome the aortic valve, overcome the aortic pressure, and thus open the aortic valve. All right, what about ventricular ejection? Okay, so the ventricle keeps squeezing, and eventually the ventricle pressure exceeds aortic. That forces the aortic valve open, blood is ejected, the volume in the ventricle will go down. Mitral valve still shut because the left ventricle's pressure is still greater than atrial pressure. Although, check out blood in the atrium starting to fill up as blood from the pulmonary circuit comes back to the heart. Okay, the amount of blood that actually gets ejected in ventricular ejection is called the stroke volume. The stroke volume. Which ventricle do you think would have the bigger stroke volume, by the way? Now, the ventricle doesn't eject all of the blood that it filled up with. Okay, It doesn't eject the entire EDV. The amount that remains is called the end systolic volume. The amount at the end of contraction. So the heart does not eject all of its blood. Now, question is, why not? Well, right now you're probably sitting down. All right? What if all of a sudden this wolf appeared? You would want to get the heck out of there. You would want your heart to be able to squeeze a little harder and eject a little more blood. So you have a reserve in there by not ejecting all of your EDV all of the time. Now, we're going to do a little math here really quick. The volume ejected by one ventricle per cardiac cycle is the stroke volume. Mathematically, we can take the end diastolic volume, the amount before contraction, and subtract the end systolic volume, the amount after contraction. So SV equals EDV minus ESV. Remember, the stroke volumes of the ventricles have got to equilibrate. They've got to balance it out, balance out or it can have drastic consequences. All right. Look 